This year marks the seventh staging of the Latin America Amateur Championship. And for the founding partners, the 2022 edition charts another step forward in their continued aim to elevate the game in South America, Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean. We had created a, quite a bit of momentum with this championship. Having to cancel it uh, last year was something that was a tough decision, but it was the right decision to do. That momentum really is something that I think could have been jeopardized had we not been able to have the championship this year. So it was very important that we get it back on the schedule. This is about creating a stage. It's about creating dreams, you know, for young kids that can leave. And when you know, somebody asked me earlier, you know, what's different about this week than where they may have played in the last couple of weeks? I said, the world's watching this week. We can't take any more time off. It's time to get back on stage. It's time to let these dreams flourish again. This championship continues to elevate the sport across the world in this region. Uh, what are the biggest signs of progress in Latin America that stand out to you and how do you see this championship continuing to support the game's development here? A proof of real success is there's now four um, winners on the PGA Tour from Latin America. Three of them played in this, 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 uh, this event. And what great credit for the region to have had four winners. And I think one of the other interesting pieces of this, which I look at with some surprise and pride is seven events. Chile's won it three times. Who would have expected that when you started out seven years ago? That is fantastic opportunity. There are a number of metrics that we look at and, and some that have been very encouraging. I mean, certainly the quality of the field every year gets better. We have several players in the top 100 of the World Amateur Golf Rankings. And then, you know, just, just the, the fact that we have so many players uh, playing collegiate golf in the United States now. I think a third of the field is playing collegiate golf. So I think those are all indicators that it's making a difference. This is an example of what golf can be when it's together. What we should really be proud of is that we're working together like we've never had in 100 years. And that's creating real opportunities that didn't exist before. Winner this week earns an invitation to the Masters, which, as we know, has a story tradition linking to the amateur game. Great Bobby Jones. I just wonder if you could speak to that tradition. Bobby Jones, the greatest amateur of all time, certainly was an inspiration uh, for everything we do at Augusta National. And uh, because of our history and heritage with amateur golf, we felt that that was where we should focus. At first in Asia, then in Latin America, and then with the Augusta National Women's Amateur. All, we hope, creating excitement for these young players and opportunities to show their skills on the world stage. So the fulfillment of a dream would be for any golfer, especially one that aspires to play at the higher levels, would be to play an, an open. How much more special is, is that opportunity that will come to the winner of the Latin America Amateur Championship this coming year? And, you know, the 150th is going to be, it's going to be a very special week. And when you look in sport, you know, there's not many sporting events that reach their 150th uh, playing. We're very conscious that back in 1859, um, the best golfer in the world was Alan Robertson. And when Alan Robertson died, a group of um, golfers got together and said, how do we identify the champion golfer? And they set up with a series of values of openness um, and ability, and they created, they created that. And the 150th playing later, we will hopefully be putting on and doing something that makes them proud and sticks to the values that they started back in 1860. Winner this week will earn an exemption into the U.S. Amateur and then the final stages of qualifying for the 2022 U.S. Open Country Club at Brookline. Yeah, I mean, I've said this many times, but our responsibility at the USGA is to create showcase events wherever you are in your career. Amateur, professional, young, old, male, female. Um, and I, you know, I don't think it's any shock why a lot of people call it a U.S. Amateur a major because it's, um, uh, it's probably the most golf you'd ever play to, to lift a trophy. People know that if you walk out of here with a trophy, you're going to walk yourself onto some other great stages in the game. And like I said, that's one of the benefits of, of three great parties coming together. Events like this don't happen without a significant corporate underpinning. Uh, you walk around this golf course, this championship, some of the world's leading corporations are represented as partners of this event. What do you think 
uh, the impact of their involvement is. They're bought into the dream, so they bring ideas to the table that make the event bigger and better. So I'm excited because um, as the, the proverb that hangs in my office says, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go further, go together. And in this event, we're going together. We've always aspired that this championship is viewed as world class. But world class costs money. And we are very grateful to a group of corporations who buy into our vision, a collective vision of the three organizations of what we're trying to achieve. And without them, we wouldn't be able to put on this event as we do and give these players the opportunity.